Now, if you have a Copilot subscription, you can use Copilot as your provider inside of Windows Terminal. So I want to take a look at that. First thing I need to do, I need to be using the Canary release of that. You can find that out on their GitHub repo. And then if I come into the settings and come under Terminal Chat, which is experimental, previously you only had the Azure OpenAI. Now we have two new choices. They announced this GitHub Copilot choice, and then there's also a choice for OpenAI. I would like to see the OpenAI choice have the API URL here so you could use a local endpoint, for example, with Olama. But for now, I just want to talk about the GitHub Copilot endpoint, which I think is great because if you already are paying for Copilot, it'd be great to use it here as well. All right, so all you have to do is choose to authenticate via GitHub. Go ahead and authorize that. And then authorize the terminal. Open that up. Once that's done, it is configured. Now I can choose this as my active provider. So I guess they have a choice to switch providers. All right, so once I set the active provider, then go ahead and save those changes. Close out of settings. Now, if I open up terminal chat by the command palette here, put in chat here, or I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for this. Now I should be able to use Copilot. And yep, there you go. You can see the icon for Copilot. Maybe I want help installing FFmpeg. Okay, so it's giving me a big long list here. Here's a Chaco install instruction I could use so I could then copy that. It copies it over to the terminal. So now I could go ahead and run that. Or I can open up the terminal chat again here, come back to where I was at. I could continue my conversation, of course, or I could clear this out. What is the current Windows power mode? So I'll run that. All right, yeah, looks like that's correct. I could go and copy that then. Looks like it pasted over the top of what I had already. So I'll get rid of this part here run what it says. And there you go. You can see I'm in high performance mode right now. And so I could continue this. I could say, how can I set balanced mode? I think this is a useful one because it's an obscure command that most people probably don't know, something you don't really need to memorize. Right, so it's giving me a lot of explanations. I don't really care for a lot of those, but I've got a command here to list the modes. Maybe I want to run that one first here. Go ahead and run that. All right. So there's balanced up above. So if I come back here, let's see if it got it correct here. Uh, it wants me to put in the GUID for the balanced power scheme. I don't want to actually do that. I want to be lazy. Let's see if it'll make the command for me so I can be lazy. Seriously. Wow, we're going to be stubborn today. Okay, let's see if that got that right. Looks like that's correct. You can see 381 there and 381 over here. Let's copy that. Took some cajoling there. Huh, that's interesting. It gave me an invalid command. I think it doesn't need the brackets around this. Okay, so that looks like that changed it now. List them out again. Okay, you can see the asterisk next to balance, so that's working. So actually, it made a mistake. I'm kind of surprised because previously I've used my own little OpenAI based helper to do this and it has no trouble. So, for example, here's my helper. Let's do it. Can you set that power mode to high performance? My helper, I've just got wired up to a shortcut key here right inside of the shell, Control B. Thinking gets a response here, paste it in. Okay, I think that's actually correct here. Might actually be scheme max though. Let's look and see here. Let's do the list. Well, let's actually ask it, how can I list modes? Okay, that works. Yeah, it switched it over to high performance. Okay. So I'm kind of surprised that I had to cajole it to change the mode for me because I'm pretty certain if I did this here, it's going to get it correct. Yeah, you can see it paste in the good just fine. So I don't know why I was having so much trouble with terminal chat, but the important point is if you have a copilot subscription that you're already paying for, you don't need to pay for something else then to be able to get some help here inside the terminal. And unlike my completion helper, which I like because it's integrated into the terminal, this one actually comes with explanation. So if you'd like to see some rationale for the commands, this is definitely a good way to go. And of course, when you're done here, you can clear out the chat and start a new chat then. And as you're sending questions, the chat history will be sent, as well as the shell that you're running, PowerShell, which you can see in the upper left here, because obviously the command will be different if you're using something like Z shell versus PowerShell. So it has to send that. In fact, let's do this here. Let me test something really quick. I want to see if I start up WSL here, if I jump into my Linux distro, I want to see if it can figure out what shell I'm using in there and see if it can actually give me help for that shell as well. And right now I'm using the fish shell. So let's just see if it can give me some help here. Control shift B. Huh, that's interesting. Actually, it didn't detect that I'm inside of a fish shell inside of WSL. So I don't know if I need to set something up inside the fish shell to report that. I may actually have to do that using some sort of NC escape codes to report the shell. And I'm probably not doing that right now. So maybe that's on me to fix if I want. 
be nice if it could figure that out, but that's not always trivial to do, especially if you start connecting to a remote machine. So I'm going to leave it here for now. That's all I really wanted to show is it's very easy to get this set up if you're already paying for Copilot. No reason why you can't take advantage of this.